キリアみんなで作ったんだ、はあ、気に入ってもらえるといいんだけど。It was so nice of them to make this for someone who constantly tried to kill them with bazaka. How do you pronounce this? Chirashi sushi. To start things off, we're going to be making our sushi vinegar. And for this, we're going to use about 200 milliliters worth of sushi vinegar, about 30 grams worth of sugar, followed by one four inch piece of kombu, and just a pinch of salt. You don't really need too much to make this. Bring this over to your stove, and we're going to bring this up to just a very light simmer. Just until all that sugar is dissolved. You actually don't want to boil this at all because that kombu will get bitter. We're going to let that rest for about 10 minutes and then strain all of this out, leaving the kombu out. I said, leave the get the kombu out of it, Paul. We don't need that for the vinegar. Get this all strained up and just let it rest until we need it. Okay, stop. Collaborate and listen. Get these mushrooms. Th oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Just soak the mushrooms in some hot water. This is gonna be the first thing you really, really need to do, just because they have to be fully hydrated before we actually make the rest of this sushi rice. Now, we're gonna use four cups worth of sushi rice, and we're gonna rinse this three times just to get that water clear. It's gonna help relieve itself of a lot of that starch that is in the sushi rice. And then, once it is nice and rinsed, we're gonna let this soak for about 30 minutes. Now we're gonna get the rest of our vegetables ready. And he definitely used lotus root for this, which can be kind of hard to find for you guys, but I was able to find some locally. We're gonna slice this pretty thin. The reason for this is because you want these to cook properly in your rice cooker. I'm only gonna be using about half of this lotus root, but you do wanna make sure you soak these in water to remove some of that starch. Now we're also using a bamboo shoe, and this is pre poached, pre cooked. I was able to find this at a Japanese market. If you can't find this, you can maybe find them in a can, but we're again only gonna be using about half of this bamboo shoot. We w a n t to cut these into matchstick sizes, kind of like a julienne, just so that way, again, these cook properly in that rice steamer. This is super important. If they're too big, it's gonna be really weird trying to cook with everything else. Pop all this into a bowl and set that to the side. Now, back to those mushrooms that are now soaked. We're gonna be using all of these mushrooms. We have about seven of them. They get nice and hydrated after a couple of hours, and you can hydrate these in the morning like I did. Feed me, human. Now, we're gonna go ahead and slice these pretty thin. Now, these mushrooms, these are shiitakes, and once they're hydrated, they don't break down very easily, so you don't have to worry about these. Getting overcooked in your rice steamer. Now for the carrot. Get this thing peeled up and we're gonna go ahead and cut this the same way we cut the bamboo shoots. You wanna cut these into matchstick slash julienne style sizes just so that way they kind of match up with the size of everything else. Get these into another bowl and just have these set to the side. So Emiya had cooked this entire thing in a single rice steamer and you can cook it separately and put it together, but Zoichi Rushi sent me out this amazing rice steamer, so we're gonna be using this. Take all of your rice, dump that directly in, followed by all of the, not all of the carrots, about half of your Carrots, half your mushrooms. We're going to be using about one cup worth of everything. Now, with the lotus root, I did cut these in half because I felt like they would distribute just a little bit better in the final rice dish. Now, we do have nice markings on this bowl that show you exactly how much liquid you need to add. However, there is a significant amount of liquid within the vegetables, so I want to actually line up my liquid where with the rice actually stops. Now we're gonna add in all that good, good dashi from the mushrooms, followed by two tablespoons worth of soy sauce, three tablespoons worth of mirin, which will give it a nice sweetness, and then finally about a half a cup worth of sake. Now we gotta take this entire thing over to our rice cooker and start the cooking process, which does take a little bit of time, so make sure you do schedule that out properly. Pop this thing in, and then this Zoijirushi rice cooker has so many options. I actually was kind of confused. Like, it's set to brown rice. That was, don't set it to brown rice. We don't need brown rice. Cancel that. Set it to white rice, Paul. There you go. But why does it do this? And now we wait. Uh, author's note that just reminded me of Your Lie in April when Kaori was singing that song, and now I just want to cry. Now we got to work with some eggs, and the first thing we're going to do is actually soft boil one of these eggs. Now I know they actually probably used quail egg for this for the little side dish that they had, but I couldn't find quail egg, so we're just going to use a regular egg. We're gonna soft boil this for about seven minutes before we shock it. Now, while that's boiling, we're gonna get the kinshi tamago ready, and this is julienne egg. This was really interesting to see because I've never actually made this before, but it is basically an egg crepe. And so, when you think of crepe, you have to think thin and smooth and silky. So, make sure you whisk up about seven to eight eggs, season this with just a touch of sugar, make sure it is strained thoroughly. 
Now after we've done that, our other egg is ready to go, so we're gonna drop this in our ice water and we're just gonna let that hang out. Now we have to make our kimchi julienne tamago. For this, you can use any saute pan. I'm gonna be using my regular tamago pan for this, but you wanna start by going with a really, really thin layer of your egg. The reason for this is because we are going to be cutting this. You don't need to flip it or, oh, uh, Paul, why would you do that to the poor egg? You wanna just cook this on one side and let the steam carry through, pop this onto a cutting board to let it rest, and there's the first one. Repeat this process until you're completely done with all of the egg, and this made me about six different egg sheet layers. They're super thin, they have a nice color to them, and we're just gonna start cutting these guys up. To start off by cutting them in half, eating this little piece because I, I love eggs, I can't help it. Get these all nice and stacked, like a little pile of egg crepes, you know? And then we're gonna slice these up pretty thin, but not too thin to where they fall apart to where you pick them up. I also cut these in half once more because I was really thinking of the final product and how these would look on top of the rice. Once you get them all cut up, pop them into your bowl and we're gonna reserve these for the side dish. There's a significant amount of prep involved in this chirashi sushi. And the next bit is going to be our snap peas. I do like to peel the stem of my snap peas so that way I'm not fighting them with my teeth. So this is totally up to you and totally optional, but once you get a bunch of them peeled, we're gonna go ahead and blanch these in boiling water for about 60 seconds. Make sure your water has a little bit of salt in them like always, and then immediately shock these. If you don't shock these, these will overcook and they're gonna get brown and ugly and just not, not nice. You want these to be vibrant and green. After you blanch those, hit your water with about a cup of sake and then drop in some little 21, 24 shrimps, which just means little shrimps or big shrimps if that's all you can find. Blanch these for about 90 seconds. These go really quick and then drop these into a little bit of that sushi vinegar we made earlier to let them soak. And these, these are so good. And after about an hour cooking in the zojirushi rice maker, our rice is done. It looks gorgeous. Now I don't have a hangiri, so I'm gonna be just using a sheet tray to cool down this rice, but we gotta give this a try. Oh, I Rachel. Rachel. After getting waifu over here to try it, we dumped this entire thing, almost dumped the entire thing. I ended up having to scoop all this out because some of those sugars in the rice end up caramelizing to the pot. And I'm sure you could read my lips on this one. This is what you want your rice to look like. Beautifully cooked, not exploded, still nice and soft, and it holds together. We do have to cool this down like we're making regular sushi rice, so keep that in mind. I take about three quarters worth of my shrimp and place that onto the rice to mix in and keep some of it for later. Now, using the paddle, pour some of your vinegar over the rice and I used about half of that vinegar at first. Get this thing nice and mixed up, making sure to cut the rice so that way you don't actually smush it or smash it. While you cool it down, a lot of those sugars will start to glisten and shine on the rice. Cut some of your snap peas in half just so they integrate just a little bit better and continue to fold this until it is cooled down and room temperature. Once you're done with that, go ahead and cover this with some wet paper towel just so it doesn't dry out. Do yourself a little happy dance and we're gonna get just a couple more things ready for garnish. For this, we're gonna use some nice slivers of seaweed and feel free to buy this if you don't have it. But since I had some, I just went ahead and cut this up into little julienne kind of slices. We're also gonna be using some green onion cause it's delicious and it belongs on this and just cut this out of bias. I used about three green onion stalks and we're just gonna keep this on the cutting board cause I'm not using another bowl at this point. And we're finally ready to put this together. So to make our chirashi sushi kind of cake, I'm gonna be using a nice 10 inch cast iron pan, or you can also use something like a spring form pan for this. Just make sure it is lined with plastic and you have something else to flip this onto, and I'm gonna be using a cutting board to do that. Get a little bit of water on your hands, it's super important so the rice doesn't stick to your hands, and start layering the first layer of your chirashi sushi. As you pat this down, you don't actually want to push down too hard or you will break the rice. Let Abigail get her little smell in, she, she really was interested in this. Now for that first layer, we're gonna actually add in a little bit of our seaweed into the middle of this. Ab Abigail, why do you steal stuff when I'm not watching? Throw in a little bit of green onions to the center of this as well, followed by a good layer of your kinshi tamago. You wanna add enough of everything to kind of cover up that first rice layer. Now add on your second rice layer, and again, don't press too hard, but you wanna make sure you do give it enough pressure to where everything kind of sticks together for that final layer. Now with a little bit of water on your hands, give this a final press with your hands so that way everything gets nice and packed in. Grab your cutting board if you're using that or your plate or whatever your choice is. I'm putting a little bit of water on this so it releases easily later. Place this on top of your entire chidashi sushi, make some room and give it a flip. 
This should release fairly easily because of the plastic wrap and it just feels so good. It's almost like, you know, an unboxing video, but it's clear so you really, really know what's inside it. This looks so nice right now. Go ahead and give the sides just a little bit of a tuck just because the pan that I used was slightly angled. Now we're gonna top it off with more seaweed, more green onion, and more egg. You can add on as much as you want with this. Just make sure it kind of looks pretty. I went ahead and used some of the snap peas that were whole on top to kind of give it that flowery feel, I guess, followed by some of those shrimp that we had reserved and not folded in. Garnish with a little bit more green onion, but now, we still have to do the rose. Yes, we're not done yet. For this, we are gonna be using some sashimi grade salmon. And unfortunately, this piece just needs to be eaten, but we're gonna cut the rest of it on a bias. This is really gonna give us those really nice thin pieces that we need to start assembling the rose. This is kind of an interesting thing just because the salmon block was a little bit small, but we are going to start off by overlapping one piece after the other and kind of rolling them together to kind of resemble a rose. I mean, it's almost there. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say we're good. Place that salmon rose right in the middle and we are finally done with the first part of the Chirashi Sushi. Yes, we still have to make those two little dudes on the side. So take a little bit of that leftover rice and form it into an onigiri style rice ball and wrap this with egg. Unfortunately, I had cut my egg a little bit too small, so it's just, it is what it is, you know? We're gonna take our soft boiled egg, which was really soft boil, and just, we're gonna give them a hat. You guys get hats. These are no longer heads. And now we're done. We are done. There it is guys, the springtime chirashi sushi. I mean, this is ridiculous. It looks really good. I'm gonna feed the animals. I'm gonna bring a slice back. Who are you calling animals? The animals. There it is guys, it looks pretty solid. It looks like just a giant rice bowl at this point, but it smells really good. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of the flavor of the shiitake mushroom from when it was actually cooking with all that liquid, but all the vegetables are still really nice, super crisp. I honestly don't know if I would have done it without that Zojirushi rice maker because it saves you so many steps. Big shout out to them for sending it out to me. If you guys wanna pick up your own, check out the links below. They're phenomenal, I absolutely love that thing. Let me know if you guys have ever had something like this before. This is my first time making, my first time having it, and it's really good. My name is Jeff PK, here on Foodie Friday, bringing anime and video game food to life. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. Stop when I speak, all cap with the speech till they caught up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, pin a long day, hit your mm -hmm.